Pernay him as with me to him 251. I serve a risen Savior in him the world today. I serve a risen Savior is in the world today. Just the time I need him is always there. He lives, he lives, my Jesus lives today. He walks with me and he talks with me, and along the sad way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You
to the rock that is higher than I. Oh, Jesus. 
things in the past known. And will praise you, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing to you among the nations. For your mercy reaches unto the heavens and your truth unto the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be above all the earth. Amen. Divine worship Amen. is now called to honor you with do the doxology. Praise God, God. six days of toil and labor, and that we are afforded this privilege to come before your awesome presence. Father God, we ask that we will remove everything that is unlike you from us. Remove every sin. Remove every iniquity. Remove every ungodly thing and cause, Lord, that there is no barrier between us and you as we fellowship with each other. We pray today that as we worship you, we will feel your anointing, we will feel your presence, we will feel your touch, and we will leave here in twice this afternoon, knowing that we have been in contact with our God. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for blessing us today. Anoint us afresh, we pray, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let us remain standing and turn her in nurse to 528. I shall turn the time of star, 528. The Lord is
The privilege is mine to welcome each and every one of us here to church today. It's not by chance why we are here, but because God has led us here for a purpose. Amen. So welcome one, welcome all, and do have yourself a blessed Sabbath. Amen. Sometimes in life, our blessing comes early. Sometimes it comes later, but, all, but they always come, and they are always on time. Keep praying, have faith, ask, believe, wait, miracle happens. Do have yourself a pleasant Sabbath. So time for us to return what the Lord has blessed us with in our tithes and offering. It says, remember how generous the Lord Jesus was. He was rich, but he became poor for, our, for your sake to make you rich out of his poverty. So it is now time for our collecting of our tithes and offering. And by the congregation to stand and bow their heads while we pray. Great loving eternal Father, truly God, we give you thanks for allowing us to have the breath of life to see such a beautiful Sabbath day. Surely, God, you have provided in ways that we will never understand Amen. because you are the all powerful provider and the way maker and the sustainer. As you have provided for us, Lord, and we have been now returning what is due unto you, may you please accept our returns, Lord, and bless it, and that you will continue to bless us individually and collectively and multiply your blessings in our life. Bless this offering now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. God was giving 636 as worshippers will just come to the table and place their thighs and up. 636, God was giving those no angels.
from the spiritual world. Good afternoon, everyone. Our scripture reading is taken from Ezekiel 37, reading from verses 1 to 3. Amen. When you're there, say amen. amen. I will read while you follow. Ezekiel 37, reading verses 1 to 3. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley, valley which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Lord, son of man, can these bone live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Here in the function of God's word. Amen. Father, I give you glory. Yes, Lord. 
Let I worship your name, Ebenezer Father. Right now. Great is your name, and great is to be praised. There is none like you. No, no. There is none to compare with you. You are above all. And mm. so, God, I thank you today. Yes. I pray now that you will look down upon me, and whatever you have seen in me, mighty God, there is many things about me that is not pleasing to you. Yes. There are many things, God, but I beg you even now, look down with your love and mercy. Watch me, I pray. Cleanse me, I beg the mighty God, that my prayer will let who will this in your building, but it will ascend to your throne, mighty God, and be answered on behalf of your children. Father, I pray today to remember Portland Cottage. I give this your church, your people. Father, you know today, a lot of us are at home. You know us especially the elder ones. But today, God, you are a God of time. You are a God of place and state. You are not subject to one place. You are here, there, and everywhere. And so I ask you now, Lord, visit your people. Those who are sick, visit the healing in your ways. Those mighty God that are worried and wondering over a lot of things, help us all to know that it's soon be over. It soon be over. You are coming again, mighty God. And it soon be over. You will come and put an end to all the worries and the troubles that we have, but death will be no more. Yes. Sin and sickness will be no more. Yes. Father, we give you glory and we Hallelujah. praise God that you will let your will be done in our lives. Oh, and Lord God, that our lives will show that we are a witness. I hear Peter say he was a witness. Mm. He witnessed to God. We see him with his own eyes. But after Job was afflicted in so many ways, he could say, he knows, he redeemed me. And he shall see him on the latter day in his eyes and not another. Mm. God, I pray today, help us that we will claim that hope, that hope that you have given to us, eternal life as Jesus, our Savior, die on Calvary, not for some sin, but for all of us, all of us who accept him as Savior and Lord, I beg you this morning, reach out to us, Lord Jesus. Give us the love we need for one another. Give us the love, Father. We will not just love in mouth, saying, but by heart. We will love that others can see that we are your people and come to glorify your name. Take over this place now, Lord. I give this pulpit to you. Not just this board, but I give it to you where I know. Let your angels, oh mighty God, let your kind of glory come down in this place now, Father. And your man servant, oh holy God, that has been preparing himself to speak to your people. He can't prepare himself enough. No. He can't prepare himself oh, enough. No. There is nothing that he can do. Yes. So I pray, mighty God, that you will send your Holy Ghost power. You will send your anointing, Heavenly Father, and you will anoint your servant from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. And then listeners that hear your words realize that it's not this man that is speaking, but it's you who is speaking to us. May we respond. May we respond like Mary did by saying, My Lord. My Lord and my God, for she realized the man that standing there was not a gardener. He was the Son of God. He was his Savior. He was his Lord. And Joseph said, my Lord and my God, today may we saw you, may we see you as we have never seen you before. May we hear you as we have never heard you before. May we have that experience that can come out. When he cried out, No, I cannot let you go. He realized he was not talking a 
Revive us and reassure us that he is still God. He has not changed. And to God be the glory, he has kept us thus far from the pandemic that is raging like wildfire. So let us remain connected to God and be obedient both to God and to the laws of the land as they are not doing against the will of God. So I'm thankful that God has given Pastor his healing touch. Journey with him safely to be here over this part of the vineyard. Please breathe a word of prayer that the Lord will use him today to deliver his message and to pray for the families that God will keep us. But before pastor comes to give us this spoken word, Sister Harsin will give us the song of meditation, and then pastor will give us the word of assurance from the living word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Let's praise him another time. Praise the Lord. I'm a bit nervous. I'm a bit nervous, but nevertheless, I want to sing to the honor and the glory of God. God's children to love have been They're longing for a bed's green shore. Where our legs are left far beyond the love, and burdens are carried no more. Come morning, I walk by the river. I rest me the evergreen tree. So I carry my cross to the midnight. Come morning, there's glory for me. Sometimes I'm despised and neglected, and I question the Father. How long? But then I take one more look at Montalvary, and this gives me the strength to go. Come morning, I walk by the river. I'll rest me the evergreen tree, so I carry my cross to the midnight. And come morning, there's glory for me. So I carry my cross to the midnight and come morning there's glory for me Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. Um, good to be with you one more time. Today should have been our communion, but 
because of the COVID-19, we have been told that we are not to serve communion, we are not to have daily blessing, and all these kind of things because it has to do with contact. And we need to, you know, minimize on our contact with each other. But it is my pleasure to be with you even though we're not having our communion. Uh, God has been good to us. And we ought to be good to Him. I thank Sister Sidlerin for her kind words of introduction. And I thank our Sister Harry Singh for that beautiful reminder that we are to be like a tree planted by the river of water that bringeth forth fruit in its season. Its leaf also shall not be that whatsoever it do and shall prosper. Because if you are going to be an evergreen tree, you have to be by the river of water. Amen. Amen. And so, Thank you so much and thank you all for coming out and thank you for worshiping one with the other. This afternoon I want to speak to you on a little topic. Can these stones live in Portland Cottage? Can these stones live in Portland Cottage? The Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 3, for just emphasis, and he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? Can these bones Live. And I answered, the prophet said, O Lord, thou knowest, can these bones live in Portland Cottage? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, speak now through your servant this field up of clay to your people who are waiting to hear from you. I avail myself to you to be used. Use me, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Brothers and sisters, Israel was in a state where they had apostatized or they were worshiping idols. They were afraid they stopped worshiping the true and the living God, the God who made heaven and the God who made earth. And my brothers and sisters, if you read in verse chapter 6, 36, the Bible tells us that God was uh, fed up to use a, a common word with the way the people were back then. They were doing their own thing. And so God said to the prophet, Speak to the mountains. Hmm. Prophesy to
to the mountains. Thus said the Lord God, because they have made you desolate and swallowed you up on every side, that he might be a possession unto the residue of the evil, and he taken up the lips of ten talkers and are an infant family of the people. Therefore, the mountains of Israel. Hear the word of the Lord God. Thus said the Lord God to the mountains and to the hills, to the rivers and to the valleys, to the desolate wastes and to the cities that are forsaken, which became a prey and the, 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 the original uh, to the residue of the heathen that are round about you. Oh, my brothers and sisters, the cities were left bare. People were gone off to their own ways, gone to do their own thing, and God could not take it anymore. So the Bible says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came upon me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel dwell in their own land, they defile it by their own way and by their doing. Their way was before me as the uncleanness of the removed woman. Hmm. My brothers and sisters, we have come to a time. In our sojourn on earth, Sister Campbell, where this pandemic has interrupted our lives the way we knew it. We cannot go back doing our thing as we ought to. We cannot go to our friend's house as we want to. We cannot go and leverage and chat and do all kinds of things. We can't even social at church anymore so that we can fellowship one with the other, get to know one another better because we are scared of this pandemic. We have become people who are not spreading the good news of salvation anymore. I heard when I was coming to this district that program cutting was the feeding basket as it relates to souls, Sister Mitchell. I heard that in this district baptized 100 people, 60 came from program cutting. But since I am here, we stop going. Don't know why. Since I'm here, we stop doing the work of God. We are tired. And we become so busy with our own business and forget God's business. We have become dry bones. We have become Good, should I say that? Good for nothing. Some of us, my brothers and sisters, we are so heavenly minded that we are no earthly good. Our gaze is set on heaven that we do not even want to know what is happening around us. And so we do not care for our neighbors. We do not share the gospel with our neighbors. We talk all kinds of things, but we don't tell them about Jesus. And so because of that, we have become dry bones. And I want to let you know, And the Bible says we have become so, so dry that we are very dry. The wind, we 
teach us how in the way because we are dry and light. Every wind of doctrine blows away. I have listened to some of the Adventist Christians. Say, Pastor, look at those other churches. They have fasting. They have prayer meeting. They have this. And, and, and we are flaws. Why don't we open church? My brothers and sisters, it's the same thing that caused Lucifer to be here today. Disobedience. It is the same problem that is causing them not to be serving God in the true essence of worship to God. In obedience to God. Yet we want to follow those who are disobedient to God. We have become dry bones in such a way that we prefer to follow falsehood than to follow truth and righteousness. But my brothers and sisters, I'm happy that God gave the prophet a vision. God gave the prophet a glimpse of what the church is like. And even though the church is dry, like dry bones, he still can make them to the life. The Bible says that the spirit or the hand of the Lord was upon me. I'm going to make seven quick points and I'm done. The Bible says, the first point is that the Lord's hand is upon us. The prophet said that the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the what? Spirit of the Lord. Not only a spirit of God's spirit can be anything. God, some, some people say I must walk with the spirit. Jerry and his devil. Some people have the spirit of demons. Some people have the spirit of devils. But the Bible says that the Lord rest his hand on the prophet and God carried him out in the spirit of the Lord. And set him down in the midst of a valley which was full of bones. My brothers and sisters, God's hand is upon you today. God's hand is upon you to go and spread the good news of salvation. God's hand is upon you to look out for your fellow men. God's hand is upon you to feed the poor, to mend the broken heart, to set those who are in captives free. And I want to let you know that when the Lord's hand is upon you, you will not be only on the mountain top. Hallelujah. You will not only be or have mountain top experiences, but he's going to take you into a valley. Yes. You see, my friends, I tell people, sister, sit down here, that if you, if you are born and grown, in the Adventist church. And you never have any setback in your life. You don't have no experience. If you're born and grow in the Adventist church and never drop out at any time, you don't have no experience yet. You see, my friends, you have to get down in the valley. Where there is trials, there is tribulation, there is fight, there is gas gas, there is carrying up income, there is malice, there is hatred, there is all kinds of tug of war fighting in the valley. When you overcome the valley experience, then when you 
you get back on the mountain top, you can show that in the way. Thank you, Jesus, because you have set me free. Amen. Amen. You don't have any experience if you never meet up and see it at them. I want to tell you something. If you are not having any valid experience, beg God for some. If you're not having any trouble, if Satan is not testing you, beg God be selling to come test you. Or else you're a Christian, you see later down in life, when the trouble comes and the testing comes your way, you're going to lose your way and it's going to be too late to return. But beg him for it now, so that when you overcome it now, you may not buck up on it down the road. You can say, Satan, move out of my way because I serve. I see his hand of mercy and I hear his voice of cheer and just the time I need him. Hallelujah. He's always here because he said he is my refuge and strength. A very present help in time of trouble. Therefore, will I not fear. Hallelujah. That's the God I serve. When he lays his hands on me, I will not be the same. I know that testing will come. I know that trials will come. I know that everybody in the church will not like me, Sister Davis. But I know that as long as I'm in the shadow of the Almighty God, as long as I'm in the Shekinah glory, that everything is going to be all right. So let the Lord lay his hands on you and lead you. The second point I want to make it is made already that God will take you into the valley. <laughs> the psalmist here will say yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me now, be fearless, I tell in the presence of my enemy, thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over, to holy goodness and mercy. And I follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Forever. Hallelujah! My brother and sister, when Jesus takes you into the valley, he will cause you and attain you to be prepared before your enemies. God always want to pick you up in front of your enemies to let your enemies know that you are truly connected to him. That you are truly his child, that you are truly, he is truly your God, and he's working in your behalf to save you and to save others. Brothers and sisters, get down in the valley and work for the Lord. It's down in the valley, we'll find the souls that are languishing in sin. Souls are dying every day. Dying in their sins. The God is saying, get down in the valley. Some writers said, a God on the mountain is still God in the valley. When things go wrong, it may be right. And the God of the good times is still God in the bad times. The God of the day is still God in the night. My brothers and sisters, the God we serve is the same God yesterday, the same God today, and will be the same God forevermore. Amen. 
when God takes you into the valley and he's going to show you all the dry bones. See, some of us, we think that we are holy, we are sanctified, we are in heaven, but we're still on earth. Amen. And, and, and we don't behave like you. I, 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 I am not like Brother Wilson. I, 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 I am not like Sister Mitchell. Because I am holy and sanctified. I know God and I, 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 I am walking with God and the enemy has no power over me. I want to tell you something today that even though you are in the bosom of Jesus, Satan will go anywhere and go to any extent to destroy you. And this is why God says, let no man deceive you. Because the devil is come down and in great wrath, seeking him. He may devour. He even come. And if he, 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 he thinks it is possible to deceive even the very elect. But I'm here to tell somebody today. And when you are in the way, <laughs> hallelujah, the Bible says that the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. So have no fear when you're down in the valley with those bones. My brothers and sisters, the Bible says that he caused me to pass by them Roll about and behold, there were very many in the home valley, and lo, they were very dry. When the Bible speaks of men's heart getting cold or wax cold, men, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Men's heart works worse and worse. This is what the Bible is talking about in the last day. That men is, are going to become so dry that they want nothing to do with God. They want nothing to do with the things of God. They have nothing to do with God's people. They curse God. They curse God's people. Yet when they, the sickness comes, they send to call you, the church, to pray for them. My brothers and sisters, God has a word for good and cutting church. God has a word for us to do. And so verse 3 said, and said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? I ask you the question today. Can the dry bones in Portland Cottage live today? You don't have to answer me. Son of man, can these bones live? I am happy that the prophet of God didn't just jump and say yes. Because he would be taking the work of God in his own heart. He would be trying to do things by his own strength. Amen. But I am happy that he said, Thou, O Lord, God, notice everything. You and I cannot cause these dry bones in Portland Cottage to come alive. You and I cannot say anybody in Portland Cottage. You and I are not worthy to be used as an hallelujah to do the will of God. But you and I were chosen by God. Not because you are good. Not because you are holy. 
Not because you are sanctified, but because God loves you. God chooses you. He loves you with an everlasting love. He sees that you can be used to please Him. And so He has called you and put you in the valley of dry bones. And ask you today, can these bones come alive? The hearts of men are failing them for fear today because they are dry bones. Can these bones come alive? The prophet of God said, Lord, thou knowest. I hope today we can say, Lord, thou knowest I am good for nothing but make me into something today. We will say to God today, Chief of sinners, though I be, but Jesus, you shed your blood for me. You died that I might live or die. You died that I might never die. As a man to the world, hallelujah, I am yours. And you will be mine. Use me today as you see fit. But no noise if these stones can live. My brothers and sisters, the Bible says that after the prophet said all of that to God, God was satisfied with his answer. And God said to him, prophesy unto the bone. And when I read that part there, I stopped and I went back to 1 Corinthians 13. Here he said, And though I speak with the tongues of men, and I'm not wrong, I am a twink, twink, uh, a tinkling brass and a twink, and someone in a silver. Sounding brass and a tinkling silver. Silver. Is my brother and sister? The Bible says we pray for that we prophesy rather than speak in tongues. So the Bible says, right? Good. So friends, God said to the prophet, prophesy unto these bones and say unto them, O oh, you dry bones, hear the word of God. Thus said the Lord God unto these dry bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into thee, and he shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and he shall live, and he shall know that I am God. So I prophesied as I was commanded, hallelujah. And as I prophesied, there was a great noise. There was a great noise, and behold, a shaking. And the bones came together, bone to bone, or bone to his bone. The fourth point I want to make, brothers and sisters, is that God calls us to prophesy. God calls us to preach. All of God's prophets were preachers. When they were giving messages, they didn't keep it to themselves. They go and teach it. They go and preach it. And when they, when they did that, they also wrote it down so that we can have it today. God calls his people to prophesy. And when we talk that way, Sister Smith, they say, we are from, we are Pentecostal. Or we are one like we are New Testament church, but we are Adventists. But God wants his church to prophesy. He wants his church to see things. He wants his people to hear from him. And he wants his people to go and prophesy and warn this world that is dark and dying in 
sin to come out of her, my people. The prophet says, God talked to him and said, Go prophesy to the boat. We need to go in at every nook and cranny of Portland and cut it and prophesy that Jesus lives, that Jesus gave his life to save Portland and cut it, and Portland and cut it should repent like Nineveh and give up their life to God. Go down in sackcloth and ashes and repent of their sins, and God will hear the cry of Portland and cut it. God says, when you prophesy to these bones, I, God, not you, the prophet, but I, God, will put flesh. I will put sinews. I will put muscles and ligaments and these things upon these bones, and I will cause them to come alive again. You see, when you prophesy, brethren, to the people here in Portland Cottage, it brings me to the fifth point that I want to make. When you prophesy the message that God has given you as a church, that my brothers and sisters, the message will be potent. The message will be effective. The message will not fall on stony ground. But the message will find the fleshy tables of the hearts of men, of the hearts of these boys. And my brothers and sisters, the Bible says they will go alive. Because the Bible says that when the prophet prophesied to the boys, it says that there was a great what? Noise. And some people don't want to make the noise in a church. Church is not a quiet place. Church is a place where you make noise worshiping the Lord. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All you have, serve the Lord with quietness. Serve the Lord with sadness. No, the Bible says, serve the Lord with gladness. Nobody is glad and keep quiet. Nobody is glad and does. You laugh and make nice. Come before his presence with what? Singing. Lord in their own tongue when they heard it. 
They said, men and brethren, what must we do to be saved? Peter said, repent and be baptized every one of you for the remission of your sin and thou shalt be saved. Let me tell you something, you can't keep quiet with God's message. You can't be laid back in a church every day. We need to get up out of here. Turn them benches outside down. Go in the edges and the byways. Go in the streets and the lanes. And reclaim back what God Satan has stolen from God. The people that used to be here must come back here. The people who never came must come here. Because this is God's house. This is God's place. And God is coming back for his church. I, I believe what I am told that almost everybody in Portland Cottage was a Seventh-day Adventist. But we have all turned back. We need to reclaim them. We need to go back to these dry bones. We need to pray life into these dry bones. We need to prophesy life in these dry bones. And they will come back to know God and to know is life everlasting. Yes, when you prophesy life to the dry bones, there will be a noise, hallelujah. There will be a shaking. And if you don't mind, shall be with a shake over the church. So I will believe you come and be stoned. But let me tell you something. Before God comes, some of us may look like bright shining stars are going to drop out. Some of us, we are here only warm and bent with those who are coming. I believe most of you are still there, but we don't change. Some of you are walking dead. We have gone so far. We are not coming back because we are being used by the enemy Satan. Because of that, we are walking here, we are on the devil's side, we are dead! But you still have time to repent and turn and live! I don't want to be shaken out of the spirit. Because this is God's church. I want to be planted on the rock of reason. The Bible is the songwriter saying times like these, you need a savior. In times like these, you need an anchor. You must be very sure. Yes, be very sure that your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. Don't be shaken out of God's earth. You must be rooted and grounded in Christ Jesus. And so as the prophet prophesied to the dry bones, the noise that he heard and the shaking that was taking place with the bones coming together, some bone connecting to Uncle Bone. You know that song? Them bones, them bones, them dry bones, them bones, them bones, them dry bones, them bones, them bones, them dry bones out here in the world of the Lord. And the head bone connect to the, the neck bone, and the neck bone connect to the shoulder bone, and the shoulder bone connect to the back bone out here. Drive on them, on them, on them, drive on them, on them. 
Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, saying, Son of man, say to the wind, Thus said the Lord God, Come from the four winds of all, breathe and breath, and breathe upon the slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as, I command, as he commanded me. And the breath came unto into me there, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. And he said unto me, Son of man, these bones, verse 11, are the old, not some, not part, 
from the pastor down, from the conference down, from the division down, from the GC down. Is the old house of Israel? Beyond, they say, our bones are dry and our head is lost. We are cut off for our part. That's what Israel is saying. We are dry. We have no hope. We have chosen our lot to be alone among those who are dead eternally. God is calling us back to life today. He wants to give us life everlasting. He wants to bring us back together again, just as all the potter did not put down the clay when it was born in his hand, but he continued to work and work upon the, upon the clay until the clay became a beautiful, perfect person. God wants to do that for you today. Do you want that to happen in your life? Do you want to come alive today again? Do you want God to make you new, to cause your dry bones to live again? I want him to make me live again. I want to be on his side. I want to make heaven my home. And so today I stand in his presence and as I lift my hand to him, I say, take me, Lord. Take full charge of me, O Lord. Let my life be consecrated to you. Let it be consecrated for your work. Let nothing hinder me from doing your will. Because I want to make it into your kingdom. I want to live in your presence. I want to live and worship you from one Sabbath to another Sabbath and from one new moon to another new moon. My brothers and sisters, I want to have this experience. If this is your desire today, for the Lord to make you come alive and cause you not to be dry anymore, but to put life in you, to breathe in you, to put flesh upon you, to put sinews upon you, and to make you walk and do his will, stand with me if it is your will. Praise God. Turn your hymnals to 529. Because we want not to be dry bones anymore, we want to be under his wing and be safely abiding. And at the end of the singing of that song, I'm going to call on my brother to come and pray for us today and call, ask the Lord to make us not to be dry bones anymore, but to be men and women of flesh, people of life, a people who can prophesy about God's goodness. Amen. Under his wings I'm safely abiding, though that I be